What's up, YouTube? I'm super excited about today's video. I'm gonna be using some radio equipment to send myself home assistant notifications without using the internet. Before I get started, I just wanted to let you know that I will be posting the progress pictures of my various projects on social media, so feel free to follow me at TechWishShea. All right, let's get on to the issue. When I'm camping in the bush with no cell phone coverage, I want to be able to know what's happening at my house. For example, my house is on fire. Sometimes that's a good thing to know. So how can we do this with no cell phone coverage? After giving it a fair amount of thought, I came up with what I think is a pretty good idea. As a licensed amateur radio operator, I've got a bunch of radio gear kicking around that's not being used. Side note, if you are not licensed, but want to do a project like this, it's not that difficult. So I highly encourage you to look up your local club and I'm sure they can get you started. In order to send notifications long distances, I will be using the messaging aspect of APRS. APRS stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System. APRS was developed in the late 80s and is still widely used today for tracking, messaging, and emergency communications. The APRS network consists of thousands of digipeters all around the world that will allow me to send my notification a much greater distance than a simple radio-to-radio -radio configuration. So right beside me here, I've got a packet modem which is connected to a Kenwood VHF radio. That packet modem is also connected to a computer running Linux and a Linux program called Zastier, which is an APRS client. This modem works in a similar way to the good old days of dial-up, except for instead of sending data packets over your phone line, it's actually sending them through the air. So I've got two additional radios as well, and both of those also have built-in TNC modems. Um, this is a portable, it's a Yaesu VX8G, and uh, this is a great little unit, but it's super low power. In addition to this, I also have a Kenwood D700 that's installed into my vehicle. Now it does give me the ability to operate it with basically its own built-in screen, but in order to give myself a better user experience, I bring along a tablet and I connect that with a serial port. That way I can run a full-blown client application right in Windows. Let's quickly talk about Home Assistant. There are two different scenarios at play here. The first scenario would be, I'm sitting at the campfire and I decide, hmm, I haven't heard anything from my house. I better make sure everything's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a stat request to my setup here and uh, hope that I get a packet of data back which contains uh, some information about, I don't know, my smoke alarm, my leak sensors, anything like that, just to make sure nothing's been tripped. The second scenario is by using a switch I've set up in Home Assistant, I'm able to turn on automatic reporting of certain sensors. So in that scenario, if any of those sensors are tripped, a message will just get automatically sent and hopefully it will show up on the other end. So here's a quick rundown of the technical side of things. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because there's just way too much to explain in just a single video. In order to make sure that my messages are sent and received correctly, each radio has a unique ID, which is known as an SSID. Probably sounds familiar. In uh, this scenario, the SSID is actually a variation of my amateur radio call sign. So basically, if I send a stat request to my call sign, from a remote location, the packet should be picked up by Zastier and fed into Node Red. If the packet is intended for Home Assistant, it will be reformatted and then sent to Home Assistant via MQTT. An automation in Home Assistant would then be triggered and a new message would be created and sent back, basically using the same method but in reverse. So it should be as simple as just typing in stat and hitting enter and hoping that uh, the reply comes back to us. Let's go give it a shot. All right, we're about uh, 10 kilometers up the Forest Service Road here, and we are in a mountain range. Uh, we definitely are f pretty far out of cell phone coverage now, so this will be a, an okay test. I mean, we're not a crazy distance from my house, but um, it'll be a, at least a, a proof of concept that this works without um, cell phone and internet infrastructure. We've got the radio tuned in once again to the right frequency there, and we're going to open up our client application. And now we're going to go messages, send message. And we're going to request a status update 
from Home Assistant. And we're going to see uh, see if that gets there. Wow, would you look at that. There is the status of our house. It's six degrees out. There's no smoke detected, no leaks detected. There's the timestamp. That actually worked. All right, so we're going to take this one step further now. We're going to go for a hike to see if we can actually get that same report on the portable. Now, theoretically, the radio in the truck should act as a relay and retransmit any packets that are received that I'm not able to get directly on here. So we're just going to go up the road a little bit and uh, see if that works. Oh, I realize that I'm out of shape after walking up uh, this hill behind me in the snow without snowshoes. It's a bit annoying, but uh, it's all good. So we're going to go ahead and uh, see if we can get a status report um, with a radio transmitting at one watt of power. The time is around just after 2.40. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to send a request for a status update. So we're going to go to new message. We're going to send that to myself with stat. And we're going to go ahead and hit send. And now we're just going to wait and see if we get a response. So, okay, that, that uh, ringing tone there, that doo -doo -doo -doo, that means that we've received a message and then we're just going to open that up and uh, there you go the message is there hold on I'm just going to adjust the scroll a little bit so it's a little bit messy but uh, all the data is there so I'll be doing another test at some point and it'll be uh, a much more long-range test this was I mean about 30 kilometers from my house so it doesn't really qualify as a long-range notification but based on the way the system works there's literally no reason that we can't get that signal to go much further than that all right conclusion time this video was meant more of an overview on the whole process and did not cover the technical setup in much depth so if you're interested in knowing more about this please uh, post in the comments and if I have enough interest I will make another video um, covering more of the tech, tech side in depth and uh, I'll also try to make an effort to answer anyone directly. Also a fun fact, I actually drove into the mountains twice for this and the first time was a complete and utter failure because I uh, screwed up my automations and I didn't thoroughly test it before I left and sure enough it did not work. So that was kind of fun. Overall for what I need I think this is going to work really well. Um, the APRS is uh, extremely powerful and most people that use it have barely barely scratched the surface on what you can accomplish with it. However, there's one thing I did not mention earlier and that's anything that's transmitted on amateur radio frequencies must not be encrypted. It has to be plain text. So if you are, let's say, transmitting the status of your house, you may not want to transmit any critical information like if your alarm's armed or disarmed. And yes, I know that I actually did transmit that information and I will be taking that off because theoretically someone could send a message um, from my call sign and get that report from my home assistant and they could theoretically use that information to know if my house is armed or disarmed. Now that is reaching pretty far. I don't think anyone's going to want to come and steal my stuff. As you can see, it's not like I'm Linus Tech Tips over here, but it's still a security thing you should consider. So anyways, I just want to say thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe. It encourages me to make more. And um, again, if you want to keep up to date on my various projects, uh, follow me on social media, um, Tech with Shea. Anyways, uh, until next time.